Hello, everyone. Once again, welcome to the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have already had a delightful conversation, the beginnings of one, with my guest today, Yael Johnson. Let me let you know a little bit about Yael. She is sometimes known as the Universe Whisperer, which you'll find out more about here in a moment. She teaches about the law of attraction and how to understand your relationship with yourself, what emotions mean, it's the language of souls, to clean up your vibration and to manifest the life you've always wanted. And we're going to talk about all that and more here in what we hope, what we're going to intend to be a very short amount of time, but we can already tell it's going to be an exciting conversation that we're both going to lose track of time on. So Yael, thank you for being here today. I'm really excited to to spend some, lose track of some time with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about this. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's begin at the beginning. Let's go back to your sort of okay. superhero origin story. So this kind of comes together for people in so many different ways, but I find there's a lot of commonality in how coaches get their start, whether it's a certain key interaction where someone I kind of identified them as a coach or gave them that word or that concept as an expression of who they are. Maybe some people have always known that coaching was sort of, even though, even if they didn't have the word for it, they always knew that they wanted to help people and guide people in certain ways towards discovering more about themselves and the world and connecting and growing. So how did you, what was your, what was your start in your journey as a coach in particular? And how, how has that journey kind of manifested itself throughout your life to where you are today? Well, I I don't really have a specific like date, start date and time and that, all that. I don't have a specific story yeah. on that, but I will say that I what I teach is I teach people how to apply principles of law of attraction, actually the universal laws. It's not just law of attraction. It's a, you know, it's also, you know, there are 12 universal laws. So I teach people how to Find the signs that your own life leads or that your your own life has led you to where you are today. Hmm. So when, for example, most people fear change. A lot of people fear change. The only reason that people fear change is because they're, I can't, I call it kind of like, it looks kind of like a cyclone in my head where your, hmm. your energy kind of goes in a cyclone. It goes in, it goes in either one direction or the other direction. One direction is everything you want. The other direction is everything you don't want. It's a matter of how aligned you are. And, and, and yeah, there's that word again. We were just talking about that earlier. <laughs> and I guess that as far as how I got into coaching, as, as I look back on my life, it turns out I've been doing it all my life. I just didn't until maybe eight years ago, now six or eight years ago, I didn't until then realize that there was a name for it and I could get paid for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I basically just found a job title for what I've been doing all my life is <laughs> I was going about it the wrong way because at the time I did it out of a need to fix people. I felt mm. like I needed to fix people. Like when I saw somebody as miserable in their life, I would do everything I can to help them, to help them with, you know, provide resources for them. But also I would put myself out into situations that eventually almost landed me in a poorhouse. For a while, I was working with an organization um, or I was creating, I created an organization to help homelessness. And the irony is at the same time, I was losing my home. <laughs> so that's the irony there. So talk yeah. about law of attraction right there. But actually that brings me to law of attraction. When I sold my house, turns out the key to almost everything, the key to getting everything you want is learning how to let go. Hmm. That house hmm. was, it was my childhood home. My parents had bought it in 79 and then I bought it in 2000. And then I didn't sell it until 2020. But in that 20 years, I got to raise my kids in the same house that I grew up in. My dad died a year after I bought the house. And my dad was a carpenter and he had done a lot of work to the house. So there were all kinds of emotions attached to that house. Oh, yeah. And then that house became, it was very important to me that my house was comfortable for everybody to be at. Because when I was growing up, one of the things I hated is my dad didn't, I wasn't allowed to have company at the house. 
<laughs> my dad was very guarded about other people, like to a fault, like to the point where I grew up hating my dad. I grew up absolutely hating my dad. He was abusive. He was a bully. He was wouldn't have anything. He would not look at anything that did not match what he wanted. But since then, I will actually, this great, is a great opportunity to talk about how I feel about the afterlife or what hmm. some people call the afterlife. Today, my dad is my best friend. Hmm. He's been dead since 2020. No, 2000. Wait. No, no, no. He's been dead since 2001. Okay. I sold the house in 2020. Sorry. Yeah. All these dates in my head. <laughs> I got divorced in 99, bought the house in 2000, and then he passed away in 2001. So needless to say, that was a transformational time in my life. <laughs> 99, <laughs> 2000, 2001. Yeah. That was a huge time in my life, which we'll, we won't get into today because that's a very long story. But <laughs> And then when I let go of the house, when I finally made the decision to let go of the house, I actually got back in touch with my high school boyfriend, my first love, actually. Uh -huh. And he and I started talking and then the situation came up. I took my son to Oklahoma, found a puppy. He, I needed a home for the puppy. He found a home for the puppy. So I had to drop off the puppy at his house on the way home from Oklahoma. Hmm. And all that led up to today where we've been married now for two years. Fantastic. Aww. So all that happens because I let go of the house. <laughs> it's amazing when you look back on it and you see all the components of the story and all the all the yeah. things that were that maybe at the time you didn't realize were were happening exactly. or necessary steps. And you look back with that. I mean, you know, it's it's cliche to say hindsight's twenty twenty, but not always. Right. It's sometimes it takes some commitment to get that mm -hmm. clarity of vision to look back on how things passed and how they right. led you to who you are and where you are today and what they what they meant then but also mm -hmm. what they mean now. Cause obviously it's right. like, you know, something that people don't always think about is how the past will change as you grow and become the person you are continuing to grow into and become. It's exactly, I'm, yes. I find it endlessly fascinating, really. And <laughs> thank you for sharing like, like that little, that little bit of your story. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's essentially what I teach is I teach people how to find those clues in hmm. their life, because a lot, a lot of people, when they, when they come to me, then they just, they're at a point in their life where they're just stuck. They, hmm. they don't know how to, how to just get things moving again. They just I, either, you know, whether, whether they're in a drastic, scary situation or even, even if they're, things aren't scary, but they're also just not moving, you know? Um, and they just, and therefore, by the way, there goes anxiety. That's where anxiety comes from. So if you feel anxiety, that's where it's coming from is there's stuff on its way to you, but you got to let some things go. You got to figure out what it is you got to let go of to get things moving along. So, so that is exactly what anxiety is. It's you're literally anxious to become the person that you are wanting to become, that you are hmm. becoming. There's something I was also trying to remember the, the anxiety of, of, there's a phrase I'll have to I'll let my I'll let, I'll let it on the on the back burner. There's some famous quote about anxiety being like the, you know what, if I think of it, I'll either say it in the, in here or I'll message you later on when I think of it. I'm sorry, okay. I, I, I was one of those things where it was tickling right at the back of my brain, tip of my tongue, and I was like, nope, it's right it there on the tip of your tongue, right there. Yeah, and I gotta let it go because I'm, it's gonna come back to me when I need it. It's gonna come back to me exactly. when the time is right. That's fine. <laughs> So talk to me a little bit about what your, your coaching practice looks like today. I, I usually kind of two part this question because I feel like there's some good, some good information, some good, some good understanding that comes from kind of both aspects and okay. it almost sounds like I'm interrogating you, but I'm not, I promise. Who do you coach and how do you coach them? You know, it's almost like that. What did you know? And when did you know it? But uh, the who is basically like the, who, who you focus on or at what stage in life um, you focus on with people, whether it's like personal, professional, both more relationship like do you have a particular focus with who you coach and where in their life they are and how you coach them part of the question is whether you largely focus on one-to-one -one coaching if you have any like smaller groups or communities or like masterminds as they're sometimes called where you get people together to kind of coach each other as you coach them as well and guidance guide them right. as they guide each other do you have any books or like programs that you want that you like promote or that you find great success and great great joy and anything like that so who do you coach 
and how do you coach them? Well, I'm excited to say my book is finally getting somewhere. <laughs> After writing like, you know, a hundred different versions of it, I finally feel like I'm like, I'm hoping it'll be out this year. I'm hoping to have it published and everything this year. My poem is kind of the kind of my mission statement. The world I see begins with me. I don't know if you have, I, actually, I'll send you a link to it in here. Yes, please, please. I'll send you a copy of it. And I'll that's kind of my, yeah, I'll share uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. And so my book is finally coming out. Um, most my work has so far been uh, one on one. I'm hoping to, in due time, do masterminds and groups and stuff like that. Hmm. As far as who I work with, or uh, what we work on, a lot of career. I do work with some businesses as far as like coaching. Let's say coaching the staff and helping everybody get on board together, establish the team aspect of it, because the energy can be all off. If, you know, if you, if we're not all on the same page, <laughs> then everybody's kind of doing their own thing and nobody knows what the other person is doing and nobody's sure who to go to for what and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I do work with, with businesses as far as that goes also. I do also work relationships. Ooh. What else? Well, relationships, that's kind of, to me, that's kind of cut and dry as far as it, what it, it all boils down to the same thing. So whether you are looking for love or whether you are in a relationship that is, might be working, might not be, or might not be working the same for the both of you. The it all boils. <laughs> it all boils down to everything. Boils down to alignment. Um, and the thing is, a lot of people don't understand what alignment is. And alignment is basically it's aligning with yourself. When they, I believe that yourself is interchangeable with the word God. Everything that I learned, I grew up Jewish, and everything that I learned about God whether it's in Judaism or in any other religion that I've you know, learned about or studied or anything like that, it's interchangeable with God. My, my, I've always said that I had a problem with organized religion, but I never really understood why. Hmm. It turns out my problem with organized religion is that all your power is handed over to some external being. Whereas what does God want me to do? What do you mean? What does God want you to do? Figure it out. Make a decision. That's what God <laughs> wants you to do. Make yes. freaking decision. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what God <laughs> wants you to do. Decide <laughs> what kind of day you're going to have, what kind of life you're going to have. That's what God wants you to do. <laughs> so alignment is self. And a lot of things, a lot of what I teach is learning how to find yourself because there are so many things that through no fault of their own, only because they were taught what, what, whatever was taught to them by previous generations, we were taught by previous generations, whatever they knew. And they, they knew religion. They knew, you know, I, I also, I never went to college, you know, college and education is, you know, to me at this point, there is some value, there is value to it. Don't get me wrong. And I understand why. And if somebody wants to go to college, cool, that's great. But I have a very hard time with how hard they push it and what a money making, you know, how money make, how industrialized it has become. Mm -hmm. So there's religion, education, oh, and uh, the medical industry. A doctor gives you a diagnosis you study up on that diagnosis and now you know what kind of life you're destined to have because the doctor told you that's what, you, that's what you're gonna live with the rest of your life. <laughs> the doctor says you're gonna be on this medication for the rest of your life. So because the doctor thinks you're gonna be on this medication for the rest of your life and he makes you believe it, mm -hmm. guess what? You live on this medication for the rest of your life. I was diagnosed as bipolar, um, what, like, 12 years ago, I think. I haven't been on medications in years. I did. I was on them for a while, for a few years, and it helped. My big problem with big pharma, as I call it, 
<laughs> and a lot of other people call it that too. So it's not oh, just yeah. me. Oh yeah. <laughs> My problem with it is not that it exists, but again, everything has become consumerized. There's, I, and it becomes the fear tactics are what I think the fear tactics are what my biggest problem with all of these industries is they scare the crap out of you. If you don't take your medicine every day, you're going to die or you're going to go crazy or whatever. If you don't go to college, you'll never end up anywhere. How many people are actually doing what they went to college to do? <laughs> How many baristas do you know with a college degree? <laughs> so, so I guess basically all of, all of what I teach is to let go of the external influences, whether it's religion or the medical industry or your schooling education, even your parents, you know, parents and teachers and stuff. They all told you, you know, what you're going to amount to or what you're not going to amount to, you know, and we get these, we learn these beliefs and we take them on. And that's why people are now afraid of change because every time things change, because they're listening to all these external influences, whenever things change, they're not feeling any better. <laughs> so when you are aligned, when you're aligned with yourself, when you know who self is, when you know who you, the true you is, and you are aligned with that, and you take inspired action from that alignment, change is in a, I look forward to change. I can't wait to, when I, when I hear something, I love surprises. Yeah. I absolutely love surprises. They're <laughs> always exciting for me. Yeah. It wasn't always the case. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. That was not always the case, but nowadays, I mean, my husband and I, we lived in an RV for about two years. We traveled across the country and now we're living in our, in Arkansas. Who the hell would have thought we'd end up in Arkansas? <laughs> it's, not, it's not any place. And before here, we were in New Mexico. These are not places that were on our bucket list. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we can see why we've been, why we ended up in New Mexico and why we have ended up here. We can tell why the universe has brought us here. Uh, as far as the, you know, the people that we've met, the, you know, our stories so far, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it all just kind of explains itself after the fact. Once you learn how to listen, it really does. Exactly. It That's makes a lot of sense. <laughs> great point. That's exactly the point is you have to learn how to listen. Two ears, one mouth. Close that. <laughs> exactly. Close it exactly. once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, when you were, uh, you were talking about all these, all these different, uh, all, all the things that get kind of like stacked upon us as we're growing up, we're getting, you know, mm -hmm. from education, from religion, from parents, from society, from all over the place. Right. And there, there gets to be this point too. And I think one of the un unspoken questions inside of like the deepest, darkest heart, like the, the, the fear part of the heart is who am I without these things? Mm -hmm. And that's like, I, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm definitely speaking from personal experience, not like some sort of universal proclamation, but I feel like it's, it's, it resonates with what you were talking about as well, because there, there is this sometimes spoken, but often unspoken fear of like, I don't know what, who I am without these things. And it could be really scary to even contemplate what that might be like. And having someone who is, you know what, let's find out together. Uh, you know what, actually, you just made me think of what finally Remember I said my book is finally after a million different versions of it, I finally yeah. figured out how to, which version to continue with or, you know, to keep going on and stuff. Yeah. The way that I came up with it is I kept feeling a need, like I need to get this book written. I need, I, I just kept feeling, there was like a desperation in it. Hmm. And I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to write a book for years, I, even before I started this journey, I've always wanted to write a book. Hmm. But what finally came together for me is when I, whenever I say I need, because my, my favorite, my personal mantra these days is I have more than I want. I have everything I want and more, or no, everything I need and more. Hmm. And everything I want and almost everything I want, whatever I don't have yet that I want is on its way. So, and that's kind of been become my personal mantra, but I, it came to me just within the last couple of months that 
whenever I say I need something, that there's a desperation to, I need, I need to talk to you. I need a friend right now. I need a hug. I need anything you need. There's a desperation to it. Why do you need it? There's, you're looking for an external, something external to make you feel better. So I figured out why, what the need was. It was what I need or what I felt like I needed was to be heard because the way I see it is I feel like I know, I know where I've been. I live today. I live in my heaven. I've been, I had to go through my hell to get here. So I understand how to get from there to here. And the hardest part for me was to let go of watching other people still going through their hell. You know, no matter what that is, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. But if you're still miserable in your life, that's always the hardest part for me is to know that it's so much easier than you think. So what I needed was to help people was to be heard and to let people know it's not that complicated. You're really seriously, you're making it so much more difficult than it has to be. So. So when I let go of that need and decided to put into practice what I teach, I decided my book is, I'm just going to share my story. I'm going to share what I learned, how I learned it. And then whoever it resonates with, please read it, (laughs) you know? And if you know somebody who else, you know, if you know somebody else, then please pass it along. Pass it on. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, my, my eventual message, I'd love the whole world to see it because honestly, I think that if the whole world were aligned, there would be no wars. There would be no, there would be no illness, you know, no more disease, no more, all that stuff. We, the only reason that stuff keeps going is out of fear. Hmm. Law of attraction works with emotions. If you are, if you feel guilty about something, you're going to attract more to feel guilty about. If you're afraid of something, you're going to attract more to be afraid of. That's how it works. And that's why the things that are a mess, that's why they're a mess because you're stuck. You're stuck in that fear, in that guilt, in that resentment, in those regrets. You're stuck in those. I'm sorry to say, but you're perpetuating it. You're complicit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but energy, while energy cannot, you can, it can't be destroyed. Once created, mm-hmm. it can't be destroyed, but it can be transmuted into something else. Mm-hmm. For example, look at all the, look at the nuclear bombs that new, things that it started out as a nuclear weapon. And then eventually we learned discoveries from it. And turns out we found cures to diseases, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, all kinds of solutions to climate stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. It came from what started out as it was created out of fear, mm-hmm. but it does not have to stay that way. That's it. When you look at it, when you look at a nuclear missile, it does not have to scare the shit out of you. Excuse my language. That's fine. <laughs> That's the I, right it, language. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be as scary as you think because you, because people look at that and go, well, they have nuclear arms. What are we, how are we going to protect ourselves? You know, well, Get out of that place of fear and think of what else could be done with that energy. Exactly. So, I can't I can't think of a better a better message to end to end the podcast on. As okay. I, I knew that we would end up going. I'm looking up at the clock now <laughs> and I realized I completely lost track of time as we were talking. But that's the I think that's the perfect message to end it on. It's right. lovely. But before I let you go, and well, first of all, last of all. All of all, thank you so much for this conversation. I've, I've been like, I, obviously I was very engrossed and I'm so glad you spent some time with me today. Before I let you go though, <laughs> if anybody who's, who's been listening to the episode wants to, and I kind of asked this as a two-part question too, if anybody wants to find out more about you mm-hmm. and or connect with you in some way, sometimes it's like, you know, you can learn more about you over on like a website or over here, but I like to connect with people on XYZ social media or whatever. So how can people find out more about you and connect with you if they want to talk to you and just learn more about what you do? Well, the best way to find out more about me and connect with me, I guess, I spend the most time in my Facebook group, The Universe Hmm. Speaks. Okay. I 
more than welcome to find me on Facebook on my personal profile also. But the group is the group is really probably what you're looking for as far as as far as this stuff goes. Okay. It's the universe speaks. And my website is the universe whisper dot me. It's not dot com, it's dot me. And that was that was purely coincidental, but it works out well. <laughs> it works out perfectly. And I do have I, I can should I include my email or Oh, you don't have to. If, nope. I mean, obviously, okay. if, like mostly just yeah, they can, they like, can get like a hold get... of me through there. And I'm happy to book a call. And I'm happy to book a call with anybody for a, you know, for a conversation to see if you, if you're thinking, maybe or even, even if you don't, you're not necessarily looking to work together, but you just want to just kind of a little bit of insight and see, you know, Maybe we'll end up working together in the future or something, or maybe I can just offer a little bit of guidance through a conversation. Um, yeah. Just give me an idea of what what's going on, um, and then I'll see if and how we can work together. Okay. My favorite part is watching people grow. I love watching the transformation. I like yeah. knowing the before and seeing where they are now, and and in my head I can see where they're going to. Usually, even better than they can. <laughs> so my goal is to get them to see as much as I can see for them. There's nothing quite like being there when a new light dawns on somebody's face. When you, when oh, you can I love see the it. aha moment. It's just, oh, man, yeah, it's, it, it, it never, ever gets old. <laughs> I so agree with you. Oh, well, thank you. This has been so much. so much fun. Thank you. This has been an absolute delight. And yeah, if you're listening <laughs> to this episode, you, you've, you're already picking up what Yale's putting down. Find, reach out, find out more about her, connect with her. Obviously, she's a delightful conversationalist and I think has a lot to offer regarding wherever you're at in your life. She has a lot to offer. So yeah, just, just do yourself a favor. Reach out, connect. And oh, again, thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you. also grief and loss. I, help, I have helped a lot of people with that, with grief and loss. I just offer a different perspective on that. I've helped a lot of people with that also. Oh, excellent. Throw that in there throw it in there for, bury the lead that's a, that's a yeah. big one for a lot of people so, i know yeah. but we didn't have time i forgot about it so i just wanted to make sure make sure to throw that in maybe maybe next time we'll explore that further as i have okay. you back on for a part two <laughs> okay but for now thank you and to the audience who's been listening thank you so much for for listening for being here for being a part of this community and we'll talk to you again very soon